Hey guys, Zach and Car Culture. Today we'll be doing a video on uh, another tech video. Um, in this video, we'll be doing is removing the charcoal canister from a 1990 Mazda Miata. Um, anyways, we'll be doing is just removing the charcoal canister. And what the charcoal canister does is it um, removes or catches all the unwanted fuel vapor that's in the fuel tank. Um, basically, what it is is just two hoses, a canister, and that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to remove it. Alright guys, here is the charcoal canister we'll be removing. Um, the reason we're removing this is just to clean up the engine bay. There isn't really good or bad sides to it other than just clean up the engine bay. So, as you can tell, it's kind of a big nasty thing. It's located next to your radiator reservoir. Now, this is for a 1990 um, NAs. I'm not going to say this is for NBs because I'm not sure, but most likely it's pretty much the same process. So, what to do you got for this is that there's two connectors on top and there's one on bottom. Now, this hose right here, all you gotta do is just kind of pull it right off, and this goes to a, a like a, a connector thing over here. Next, you just gotta take your pliers and take out this one, and this one should pop right off as well. And then now you only have one more to go. Now what you want to do for this one is to take it out of its holder, kind of flip it upside down. You can see the hose underneath there, and then you should be able just to pull it off too. And there we go. And we're pretty much halfway done now. Uh, so there's the charcoal canister. Like I said, it's a big annoying piece, so you can just set that aside. Now here is what you gotta do for the hoses. So this is the one that goes to the top. Same thing, just take off the clamp and then you should be able to just twist it off. And then you do have one underneath this harness. This should be able to twist off as well. And there you go, these are your two ports. Now on most forms I've read is that you just use this bottom piece and you're able to connect these two and then just use some zip ties. But since it's kind of kinked and high up, I think what I'm gonna do is just take the top hose and you should be able to find a piece that forms to it. So it looks like right there. So the top or the bottom piece should be able to connect, so you just gotta snip it right here, and then you can use the original clamps as well. All right, next. Um, so now, I got kind of lazy, but here's the bracket that holds onto it. It goes right in there, and there's two 10 mil studs you can take out and then prize right out of there. Another thing to do to clean it up a little bit more is you can take off this. Um, connecting piece that it's part of. Now it's going to be kind of a, a pain because there's a, a loose nut on there and it's on a rubber thing. So what you can do is you can take a 10 millimeter wrench Alright guys, here's the uniqueness about me out of mods and just like following the form and stuff like this. So, what I said is that you got to take that hose that goes to the intake manifold and you got to plug one of those ports. Uh, these are like the vacuum line hoses and I believe it's this one, no this one. Anyways, it doesn't matter since you guys are doing it on the car, you'll know which one to take it off. But what you do to plug that hole, if you don't want to go to the auto parts store, is you open your trunk and you look inside here. Oh gosh. Now, I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like these random little plug things that the bolts on the tail light have. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but there was one right here. This is the little plug you'll need to cap off your intake. Here's the plug and it fits perfectly. Alright guys, there it is. That was a pretty easy video and I probably didn't have to make one because there's so many <coughs> threads that follow it and so easy to do. But I like video better than reading so that's for anyone that's like me. And that's how you remove the canister. Now it's been reported a few times that it can create kind of a, an odor since it collects the fumes. Um, but I've read a lot of times it doesn't matter either. So I'm going to take the risk and just remove it before I do anything with the motor. 
just because I want more room in engine bay since I'll be putting forced induction. Hey, thanks for watching guys. Now this video is pretty simple, but if you like it, give it a thumbs up and uh, more Turbo Miata stuff is coming this week since tomorrow is when I get all my parts. So there'll be quite a bit of videos. Thanks for watching guys.